Hello and welcome to episode 2 of my 3ds Max 2013 beginner tutorial video series. In this video I will be going over the main toolbar and most of these icons, there are some that I am going to wait on because they are a little more advanced. And if I have time, what these little doodads do in the uh, viewport windows. I already have a little scene set up here already, so let's just jump into this. Select and link. And this is just a parent-child relationship if you've used any of the 3D software. Click on what you want to be the child, drag, and release to parent. For those who don't know what this is, essentially the child can move independently, but it will also mimic the parent with a uh, respect to movement, rotating, scaling, etc. To unlink, select the child again and press the unlink button right next to it. Now that connection is severed. Space warp, um, yeah, that's more advanced. I'm just going to leave that for now. Selection filter, default set to select everything. You have it set to geometry. This is geometry, so it will select everything. Select, say, lights. The only light I have here is hidden, so it's not going to select anything. Uh, select object. This does exactly what you would think. Click and it will select an object. Press down control. Select multiple objects. Alt to deselect. Uh, select by name. Useful if you have a lot of stuff on the screen and it's kind of clustered. Teapot, okay, and teapot selected. Uh, square selection by default. Click and hold down. You'll have circular, hard lasso, soft lasso, and spray can for some reason. I don't know who's using that, but um, someone must be if they're including it. Uh, window crossing. This has to do with your selection here. If you notice the little selection, uh, if it goes halfway through an object or, or whatever, even just barely through it, it will go ahead and select it. If you click and toggle that, you'll notice the box moves into the center. This now means that an object has to be completely surrounded by that in order for it to be selected. Select and move brings up what is known as the gizmo. Now, the gizmo has many forms, which you will see here, but for this one, it brings up these little coordinate arrows. If you select one of the arrows, it will only drag along that axis. Or axis. Hmm not sure. Uh, if you hover around the center, you'll see these little boxes come up, and you'll notice that two arrows highlight. It'll now move with respect to those two. Rotate works basically the same way. You'll have different colored ones for the different coordinate systems, and if you select in the middle, you have free rotate. Uh, scaling is a little different. You have the scale gizmo here in the center, but you can't really see the full effect of these different options here unless you toggle it off, which you can go ahead and do that with X. Now, you'll see you still have the little icon as the uh, scaling icon, and it has these little three red axes here, and is going to scale it uniformly with respect to those three. Select non-uniform, and you'll now see it's only in these two. And then you have squish and stretch, which is really cartoonish. And back to normal. Uh, reference coordinate system. This determines where the gizmo is going to be relative to whatever you pick here. Uh, view, if you set it to screen, you'll see it sets over to this screen here. Um, there's world, parent, local, feel free to mess with those. Uh, pivot point, um, notice this mostly when you have more than one object selected. Uh, the top one here, use pivot point center, it will just keep it on whatever the first object you selected was. Uh, second one down will go with what is roughly the center of the objects that you have selected. And third one here will go based off of world geometry. Uh, select and manipulate. That's a little more advanced, so I'll leave that for now. Keyboard shortcut override toggle. 
that just does exactly what you would think, overrides shortcuts. Um, snaps toggle. Now, what this does is this will just snap to the grid here. Useful for moving around. Uh, if you right-click on any one of these, it'll bring up the options menu for all these. I recommend leaving this, but if you look over options, you'll actually see uh, the percents here. For, like, say, angles, I'll put it at 10. Uh, scale, 25%, so you can see it a little better when I demo them. But if I were to, say, select this cone and then move it, you'll see it's snapping to the grids. There is a 3 here that shows with respect to what dimension, 3, 2.5, and 2. Uh, angle, that works best with the rotating, as you can see over here. And if you look, I set it to 10, and the little number is changing by 10 degree increments. Same with scale. If I select that and then scale up, oh, might help if I actually selected it, you'll see it's jumping by 10% every single time. Uh, spinner. Um, the spinner is actually, if you look over here under modify, is these little things here. These are called the spinners. Um, you don't really see it much here because um, I'm in metric. I think by default it's linked to um, the uh, generic units the 3DS Max has. But honestly, I'm, I'm not too sure. I couldn't really find a lot of info about it. Uh, edit name selection set. This works if, say, you had like a large outdoor scene and uh, you had a bunch of apples on, on a tree and in the ground. You could create a set for them and you know, have all the apples just select together at once. See so a little drop-down menu there. If you had sets, you could do that. Mirror. Uh, this just will be able to mirror an object uh, along the axes here. And these are the options. You have copy, which just makes an exact copy of it. And for this, I will just select X. And let's see a little X axis there. It moves out along that. And that's just how that works. Uh, align, align one object to another. This little menu that'll come up and you can select how exactly you want it aligned. Um, the rest of these are kind of advanced. I will leave those for now. Um, material editor. Uh, shortcut for this is M might want to remember that it comes in handy uh, if yours doesn't like look like this don't worry if you click on mode there's actually two there's compact and slate I'm using compact I believe by default it starts in slate um, it's just really down to preference I prefer the compact but whatever uh, then you have render setup which will go through all your render settings um, I think I'll save that for a different video because there's a lot of options in there. It's usually something that you want to leave more advanced when you're fine-tuning your renders. Um, rendered frame window, which is just the window that the render comes up in. And then you have render production, which uh, is F9 uh, as a shortcut. And we'll just render the scene out for you. Moving on to these, I will go ahead and unhide the other stuff that I have. This is, I'll start over here. You have your maximizing your viewport, which shortcut is Alt-W, which whatever viewport you have selected, you can uh, just maximize that right up to full screen. Alt-W to take it back. 
Um, select which active viewport you want. Disable a viewport. Uh, toggle the grids on and off in that viewport. Um, view cube, which is this. Steering wheel. I really don't like this thing. Um, I'll bring it up here. Uh, it has some of your options on it, but it's kind of like floating around the mouse. N not a fan of it, really. Um, X view. This has some nice options for when you're doing more advanced modeling. Um, so you can you can see like the over overlapping faces, areas where there's multiple edges, overlapping faces. I think I said overlapping faces twice. <laughs> Whatever. Um, Create preview, configure viewports. Uh, perspective in this little next area. That that depends. Th these are all how you're going to view things. Perspective is this sort of. You can see it best in a side angle, like this. It looks more like what you would expect from real life. You know, everything isn't lined up perfectly, which is what orthographic it is. It kind of flattens it and doesn't make it realistic at all. Um, you have top, bottom, left, right, uh, same as normal. Um, in addition, you can also view through what your camera would see and through what your light would see. Now, what I have in there right now is an omnidirectional light, so you can't really view through it. But if you had uh, any sort of light that was directional, you would be able to view through it, so you can really fine-tune what exactly you are looking at. Um, let me see here. This just determines how everything looks in the window. You have realistic, shaded, Consistent colors, um, edged faces. What that does is that that brings up like the wireframe grid around everything. That one's actually a toggle that you can have on with anything else. Um, facets, hidden lines, wireframe, stylized. Keep in mind though that this stuff will not actually affect what your renders look like. Um, it, it's just for your viewing. Um, let me think. Well, we're going on 13 minutes. Um, I think that's pretty good, though, for my second video. Uh, let me know what you think. Comment. Leave feedback. And uh, I will see you in our next video.